Hello everyone, I hope the apocalypse is treating you well. We have a really special guest here, fresh, fresh from his win in the Vassal World Cup. We have Real Veers, um, who just yesterday basically has won the largest, most watched Vassal World Cup in Armada history. And considering we don't have worlds, is probably now the top ranked player in the world. Um, I don't think there's anyone apart from Nathan Coda who wasn't in that World Cup. Um, we had all nationalities, so it wasn't just the the what 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 is it they call it the Minnesota World Regionals this time. Yeah. So very welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, how how does it feel to win the largest Vassal World Cup ever? Yeah, thanks for having me. Great, great thing that you do in these these uh, enduring times. Honestly, it feels amazing when GG was called at the end of the the game. I had to stand up and like hug my girlfriend, jump in the air because th there was so so many emotions built up during these these tense games from the beginning. Uh, I didn't qualify. I was one of the lucky guys who just got in because I just wrote a list too big and I was like, "Pretty please, can I play?" And then I saw I saw my pots. I was like, ah, oh, it's Aresius and the other two guys there, German, and I know them as well. And ah, oh, they have so good lists, and it feels amazing. It's it's a great level of competition. I think it's one of the, the highest skill floors that we had so far. We had so many great personalities, so many new players, which is awesome. So thanks for Bix for making it the People's World Cup. As he as you said, a lot of people I think had the chance to play in a prestigious event like this now, and it's good because it showed them that yeah there are top players, but everyone is just human. Everyone can make make mistakes, and you can be on par with them. We have a lot of new players who came in and scored like top ten. Uh, we had some renowned players who failed to make uh, an impression, but overall. I think that the field of competition was so high. It was close to a Worlds. It wasn't quite a Worlds because, as you said, and Nate Coda wasn't there. Tokra couldn't play. The Canadians, I think, only Roquex played. I'm not sure. And Louis Andre, of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, who, um, who is yeah. a big, big surprise in the new players? One of the new players who just came out of nowhere. Uh, Roland, the Danish player as well. Yeah. Like, they're like... And he's running separate cities, murdering everybody. Yeah. Like, how is that meant to work? I've met, met respect for him. And like, the list that he plays, I, I looked over and I was like, oh. I, I played a similar list in, in the Clone Wars uh, kickoff tournament. And I think I made the first, first in a cut, um, or the Euro cut. But his list is so different. It's like just one, um, what's it called? A frigate uh, mun Munificent who, who can push squads. And then, like, the Star Frigate, who everyone just says that's ah, bad because you pay such a high tax for the defensive retrofit and he's just like they're reverting our expectations with with his objects that he plays like a bending mining field and he, he rates your your engineering with with uh, Doku it's crazy ideas Paul Heaver what he did for for Nifensons. I think he was also top like 12 13 which is awesome yeah and yeah great just, great list just the creativity from people but um, and yeah. as well as that, like I suppose, yeah, it's just to get, you know, the the, you know, while the experienced players have brought um, you know, top quality play, the mix of the new players just means that the meta keeps getting shaken up, and like there's things that you know people have settled into the pattern of, but like if you look at the variety. We had four different commanders in the top four, which is fantastic. We had no star hawks or onagers in the top two. Um, yeah. Like, it's just fantastic. Um, so, it, I suppose this evening we want to go through how the games went and give you a chance to talk about uh, the the games. And uh, I think your pod is an example of never give up, never surrender. Yeah, well, I think I'll start with the list, but everyone might be familiar with this list. Um, it's basically a variation of a Tokra's world's winning list. Uh, so it's a Sloan with a Quasar, Raider, and a Centicore, Architans, and two Gusantis. 
but then we mixed in Morallo and two Landers for the new ACE restrictions. Because, uh, well, with Germans, we always had uh, like this need to make Morallo work somehow. Don't ask me. I think Tokra started it. And yeah, with, with the new ACE cap, you have to adjust because uh, the old Sloan list was based a lot around these eight aces or seven aces plus the saber. And then you have the intel change, which makes it harder because you can now clue in these uh, squadrons more easily. And so I think it was in February of last year when I first saw a, a regional report from northern Germany where Tokra attended. I looked at his list and I was like, this bastard. And it was a similar list to mine. It was the first time I saw it, and then uh, I saw him on Vessel, and I PM'd him. I was like, dude, are you serious with this list? And he said, yeah, it's working. It's, it's great. It has no downsides. It's my, it's my formula of winning, and it even got better with Morale, because that's it. it's not that ridiculous as he used to play before in the, the previous uh, Vessel World Cup, where I think he had like 15 activations, something up to this. Yeah. I think it was five, five Lambdas. And I played against him in the pot phase, and it was my first game against Morello, and I was like, oh, this fucking That was bullshit. the list with the victory, wasn't it? Where So yeah. he was fighter coordinating teams, the land, uh, and then activating them. And I, I, yeah. I, I can't remember, I think in one of the testing games, I think like 40 or 50 extra activations in a game I've faced, and that game took four hours. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's good, because... Starting on round one, back in this game, uh, in the Vessel World Cup uh, 2020, I think like, it took like 10 minutes on the first squadron phase just to calculate if Morello can make one attack on my Onager or something like this. I was like sitting there like... Ugh. I think Green Knight was suggesting death clocks at that stage. Yeah. yeah like a chess clock, yep. which just have a limited amount of time. Yeah, It can be during, especially in Vessel. Um, on uh, live games, I've played this list uh, in Polish Nationals last year. Um, I never made time, even when I was second player. So in real life, if you if you get used to it and you know how to, to shuffle your squadrons around, it can be done. It takes a bit longer than normal squadron play, but it can be done in, in 2 hours 15. Uh, even uh, if you play like against the Reich and Aces list, where there's a lot of squadron interactions and like damage shuffling, zombieing, stuff like that. It can be done. Um, yeah, but it all started like roughly one year ago. Uh, it was the last uh, tournament before before the pandemic hit uh, Germany, and we went into full lockdown. We were in Essen. There was a like, twenty-four player tournament, and he was playing uh, the Moralonist, and he was on top table. I was on uh, table two, and I submarined him by like twenty-four, twenty-three margin of victory. And then we had a little talk because I was winning a, a prime the week before. And there were some guys who wanted to come, uh, like Garrett as well, uh, 18711. So all the German guys who, who made a top cut, we all wanted to go to, to Worlds last year. And we also had like flux, uh, book schedules, everything, hotels. And then we were discussing uh, what could we bring, what could shake up the meta, what could be new. And then we were discussing about different shapes of Morallo. Uh, like Tokra with his normal stylus, which is now, I think, German Sloan. Um, on a Gekweza Sloan, which is disgusting. Um, Leon played a lot of that in, in the German Vessel League with the, the old uh, Star Destroyer Onega and Accuracy Generation uh, Quasa that pushes Morallo. There's no a fun. German Vassal League, eh? <laughs> yeah, there's a German Vassal League. We only had 16 players last last time, but we're starting now with the, the season two, so to speak, and I think we have 26 so far. If, so. if, you, if you have a list of the lists that are in that and you want to send it on to me, I'd definitely be interested in taking a look and maybe sharing it out, uh, as long as they're not okay. proprietary now. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a different concept because we said like uh, it, it was over like half a year. Every, every three weeks you have one game, and we decided to that you can bring a new list every time because oh, it was supposed to be casual. Yeah, get your new players on board and stuff like that. No, yeah. that's that's a, that's yeah. a good idea. That's that's the most important part, and like on on these events, uh, Morello is just a bit too <laughs> too much. Um, 
Yeah, but they, they we talked, and then he afterwards, um, I said that I was interested in going to Worlds, but I wasn't really uh, really fixed on my list that, and I tried to play Thrawn uh, on the Quasar, so uh, similar to what Sam played in last uh, year's World Cup, just with Thrawn, because I like the flexibility of uh, of having to nav with a Quasar and the Onyga and have an additional command. Mm -hmm. I think Thrawn excels at that. Uh, but he said, yeah, try my list. And I think for me, back in the time, there was a huge honor that the reigning world champion said, he, you can blame my list. I think you, you have what it takes. And so, yeah, I thought, mm. yeah. then pandemic happened, organized play was shut down. And then slowly in the summer, it got risen up again. There were some tournaments in Germany locally. And at the end of September, I was uh, traveling to Poland, where some of the Polish friends uh, invited us to come. And sadly, I was the only one who could make it, but I was glad I did, because it was like the only major German tournament last year that I played in person. Um, and I brought Morallo there. And it was a, not a variation. I think it was closer to Tokwa's list. But um, still, without uh, any of the Intel shenanigans, no Shiranu, um, it had the uh, the uh, command articles with the, the ancient text, so you can be even more <laughs> dodgier. Um, but I switched from from Brunson to Lida because I I was thinking that uh, Oniger were more more of a risk for for the Centipore than than like close range hit crits or anything or like a double because evading two dice. Of, I valued more than than uh, having getting to cancel one. Um, it went pretty well there. I was uh, fourth after Swiss and I think third after after the cut and tied tied with the second player for I lost on uh, MOV. And then yeah, I had some casual games in in like quarter four. It was pretty pretty chill. I was I was a bit burned out on on vessel. Because I played so much in, in in the beginning of the year, and then in summer there was a lot of, of uh, in-person gaming because it was the only time frame that we had to play with our friends. And so I was a bit burned out. Didn't play a lot. I played then Poldi, which was my pot opponent in I think the final game of the Vessel World, uh, the German uh, Vessel League. And there, yeah, I brought out Morallo because I wanted to try it again, and I needed a, a win to be uh, top of the, the group. And then, yeah, there was also, then in this December, we, we decided to take a break. Then there was the news of, of the Clone Wars, which was super exciting, which brought me back into the, into the game and the love of Vessel, because I could play Clone Wars ships on, on Vessel. Great. And like Green Knight getting those, even the Wave 10 stuff in there. Um, I've had yeah. one or two games with Grievous, and uh, he's my new favorite toy. <laughs> Yeah, I played one game uh, with Blue Coon and Venators and Arcs. Uh, that sounds Who are small delightful. ships. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, you thought you were going to get evade these fighters. Anyway, to your pod games, which I think we started talking about 10 minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> so you, apart from, uh, you said Aresius and Poldi, and who was the third person in your pod? Uh, it's MRKS. Uh, it's Marcus. He's a, he's a German player as well. He uh, won the, the prime that I TO'd. Um, when was it? I think February of last year. So uh, he's, a, he's, a de he's a decent player. He knows how, how to play the game. He, he usually plays like somewhat off meta list. And when I saw his list, I was like, this is the kind of list that can beat me because it's seven fast ships with TRC, with Reken. He can just. Jump on my Quasar, jump on my Centicore, which is what he did in, his, in our game. Unfortunately, he, I had a one point bid, so I could take second. He chose uh, Sensonet, which surprised me. Because usually people don't think they just play targeting beacons. Yep. And yeah, that went, didn't went well for him. It was a 10 1, 302 MOV, so barely making it to 10. And the second game was against uh, Poldi, who played an uh, Onager with uh, Romoli. And he had like a flag demolisher, Gladiator 2, and an uh, instigator with Iden. I, if I remember, four tie interceptors with reserve hangar decks. And like, oof, if there was a list guys. to murder Morello and friends, 
Yeah. Yeah, because I presume just the instigator tied up the squads and then the demo came in and ate them all. Yeah. Yeah. This time I had uh, Shirino. Um, but we played before in the in, uh, beginning of December, so we both knew our lists couldn't engage each other. And we knew it would be some, like, on the edge of, of long distance of both sides, it would be like some, a bit of squadron fights, and then maybe someone gets a flotilla, and then it's a 6 5 for either side. And uh, he got the upper hand, he killed more squadrons. I think he got um, Morallo and Steel, and with those both gone, I cannot do anything against ships. And then a bit more, and I think he won by 40 MOV or something. Yeah, that happened, so it was a, it was a close game. Um, he made the right call, he, he stayed back. I, I couldn't turn in with my, with my Quasar, because the Quasar has, against uh, Romo the Oniger, he can get one shot with a bad roll, or there could be a bad crit, like if you get a comms noise and you get reduced to speed one, yeah. versus a first play Oniger. Uh, not good. You need to keep on so, running. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was in uh, my last game was against Rhesius. Uh, I was at 15 points. And at this stage, it was already decided that uh, Rhesius and, and myself we would make the cut. But playing Rhesius is always a great experience. He's uh, such a talented player with, with his liberty of death. You know the Italian nickname for him, right? No. The sentence, as in if you get him, you've received a death sentence in the Italian tournaments. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah. And, and I've, I've seen him in uh, Euros uh, two years ago. Uh, watch him play, he's like an exceptional player. He's been in the, in the top four of the Wrestle World Cup, I think like three or four times. Won it once, so well deserved. And it was also a close game. Uh, he did the right thing, he caught up my Mauler in the squad fight uh, with his rogues, and then semi last first uh, Mauler, and so I had to put way more effort into the squadron fight to win it, which I play slow and I, I win the squadron fight, but it took a lot of effort and I jumped uh, one of his hammerheads with, with Morallo and friends, but so I was a bit out of position, and my Quasar had to run away because there was a Liberty with Speed 4 coming in that can potentially one-shot it because it has like HIEs, it has like Caitlyn, Sholen, it can close in very fun, one Karen. So basically if you get a shot at medium range, Quasar is dead. So I always had to push the Quasar away even more than I want to. And the thing is with Morallo, in comparison to, to Dennis' list, you actually have to somewhat stay close to your squadrons because if you want the full squall effect, you have to be in medium range of your, of your lambdas. And you pay all these points. I mean, that's serious. It's, it's not just Morallo for 22 points. You pay 30 points for the two lambdas. You pay for Quasar. You pay with suboptimal objectives because you're only going to play targeting beacons. So you cannot farm points. And it's, it's not just said that you have 134 points in squadrons, but you are also the supporting cast who cannot do anything else but support these squadrons. Yep. So these squadrons need to multiply in their value. So 134 points need to become 250 or, or up in value. Um, it can be frustrating. I can totally understand it, but this, that's the that's downside that you pay. And with this list, you, you probably won't lose much. Because, let's be honest, you won't lose the radar unless you fly it in front of a ISD front arc. And you can lose the Centicore and you can lose the Quasar. And then it can be very hard to make up those points. So he, he, Aresius played great. I think it's, it's the right, was the right call to go first, go in. He identified my, my mistake, my overextension with Mauler, went in, killed him. So my squads couldn't go uh, full ham on him, and then he was able to snipe the Quasar because you cannot outrun a, a speed for a Liberty that is nabbing after you with a Quasar that wants to uh, wants to squat. Yep, and like yeah. Aracius has played um, on Karen so much in the last couple of years, there's yeah. probably no one better with that chip. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so 
let that be a lesson to new players. You can, you as long as you you win in the right way and don't lose too much, you can still lose and 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 be in there with with a shot when it all matters. So that got you out of the pod. How did the next round go? Next round was against uh, Jolly Green Giant, who was bringing uh, Kraken list. Um, so separatist Kraken think... or Rebel Kraken? Uh, Rebel, the new the new hot stuff with all the. The good ones play, but it's it's the coolest. As a, I, I really like Kraken because there's just so much, so much going going for him in 1.5. Despite he hasn't changed, but I think Trufiness has talked a lot about what what made Kraken great. And he has an interesting list. Uh, it was like a MC30 with Kraken, uh, CR90B with Engine Techs and uh, HIEs, which I love, and TRC90, and then some minor squad ball. Um, he chose second. Yeah, and we had, yeah, Joe second. I played first, and to be fair, I, I've played a lot as first player with this list, so I, I know what to do. And if you give up initiative, you probably never get any of the ships because I can always activate the ship that's in danger first if you close in with any ship, or I, I can nuke one of your corvettes in this in this matchup. I couldn't I, I couldn't get the foresight. Because that ship is just too tanky without the morale activations, but apart from that. And how much do you suffer from not having those extra activations if they don't have objective tokens in their objective list? It's not bad because uh, if, if I play as first player, my threat range gets even increased because I can play the lambdas in uh, the long range, and then I get long range plus relay, which is uh, 5 plus 3 effective range. So the Quasar is more safe when I play first because it can just stay back and I can fly a Centicore for example a bit more aggressive. I can try to have it shot at least once a game uh, with TRC but um, the, the advantage of being first is that you probably never catch. You, you can cage in a, a Centicore because an Architense isn't that good at maneuvering but a Quasar usually can slip out and in this game, I, I got everything, but uh, but the uh, MC30 just kind of killed it. And it was in my head, I was calculating. I, I think it's better to get his squads and then maybe two CR90s, but they also take a lot of effort now to kill with the evade changes because the blue light bomber is 50 50. You, you yeah. use an evade it and can be can be can be good, can be can be harmful, but now. You need to to invest a, a full uh, quasar activation into killing a CR90, which also ensures that the rest of the list can actually approach the quasar. And killing the quasar is the, the key element in defeating my list. And then he made a questionable decision and he flew off with his MC30. I don't know why, but that happened. So it was was a 10, 10 for me in that game. And the next list was uh, Roquex. Kraken. And Rokrax uh, is not a name you like to see on the opposing docket. And he's not before <laughs> no. the final. He is a no. scary opponent. I think two times national champion of Canada, if I remember correctly. Great player overall. He was one of the, the other 10s. I think Louis Andre had a 10 as well. And uh, I was paired against Rokrax. He chose first, which I think was the right call as well. Um, because he has all these these quick elements, he can uh, quickly engage my my quasar, and I probably cannot kill an MC30 in one round. Plus, he has all these fast rogues. He has I think, six YTs, and he had Katsu and and Lando. Um, yeah, the deployment was a bit weird. We somehow faced off, but then he turned away, and I turned in the other direction, and I somehow. With token shenanigans, I was able to get his uh, foresight, uh, the non flagship, and also get like two YT 2400s. And he uh, landed my my poor Guzanti with Volda. So it was a seven. And my third game was against uh, Red Scourge, who brought a Starhawk, um, two TRC 90s, a uh, finger flotilla, and these <laughs> headhunters. <laughs> I think uh, blunt and free, free headhunters. Yeah, 
four deployments and shenanigans. And I knew in this game, like, it was a tank hawk, 225 points in a star hawk. With uh, Unity, with EST, Asteroid Tactics, because it was the only, only objective that I could pick that wouldn't give me a downside. Because with Asteroid Tactics, I just, in the worst case, I just fly away and he flies away and it's a 6 5. Um, I could manage to, to snipe uh, one, of the, one or two of the squadrons and then we somehow just bypass each other, no shots were fired. And in the end, he made a questionable decision. He flew in his uh, CR-90s back into the middle and in front of his Starhawk and my squads. With lucky dice, I could kill both of them, turn five and six. So there was a, another seven. So I was at uh, 24 points. I think Angry Ewok was at 25 points. And so uh, it was the, the fourth Swiss game. Um, we were at the top table, but it was very close. And it was risky to, to really engage him. I, I knew I couldn't fly into his list because he has Akbar, he has like a, a murder assault frigate that can one-shot my any ship of mine with, with the Intel officer, with Caitlin. Seven, seven red dice if he times in a, a CF command. So I would, would dodge around a bit and I, I was lucky uh, he deployed one of the, the transports a bit too far on the edge and mixed up his squadrons or, or they were too far out. So I could, uh, top of turn two, I could engage his transport, kill it. So I was up in activation and only two squadrons could retaliate. So I could slowly uh, pick him apart uh, for another seven. But it worked out for him as well. And then yeah, the main Swiss round, I finished with 31 points, uh, second place. Just uh, Gilead Palladion was above me, quite a, I think, 400 or 500 more moth than me, because my list cannot, cannot score well. It's, it's very unlikely to score higher than an 8, yep. because usually you, you just lack the, the burst damage to, to bring down a ship. You, you can do it if you have Moralo. In Poland, I defeated a Moti dual ISD list. It can be done, but it's, it's, you need a lot of, of moving parts yeah. that, that work together. So, but I was ex excited. I was uh, second after, after Swiss. It was a good feeling. And then I think fourth overall in the, the, in the edits uh, seeding, um, which was fine as well. Because to be fair, I, I didn't think I make the, the top cut, the top four yeah. cut in this, in this sea of sharks. There were so many good players that I... On the one hand, wanted to play. I wanted to yeah. play against Rufinus because I wanted to see how my list works against his fast, uh, engaging list because he can close the gap so fast. He has speed four plus one with his engine techs. He has these rogues who can bunch up and, and slow down my squadrons, and then he can just team up against my Quasar, kill it, and then it could be game for him. That would have been interesting. Louis Andre list. I would have liked to play it rolled, uh, see how the Separatist works because. There was a, a bit of a grudge match because he, I think he tabled uh, Leon. <laughs> he had a German who played uh, Sloan and a variation of Top Wrestlers, so we wanted retaliation. Uh, but I think it was it's a, a great mix of, of lists that made it into the, the Top 4 cut. Two Imperials, two Rebels. Sadly, no, no Clone Wars faction, but I think uh, with the next two waves That's and next year's Clone Wars, yeah. Um, it was a. Uh, GP with his uh, famous front list from Nova, where he won nationals with, uh, Trufiness with Kraken, the speed madness, speed addict, and uh, Angry Ewok with his Akbar fleet. I was matched up against uh, GP. And in the semifinals, he had the downside of, he had a PIC, a planetary iron cannon as his objective, so he couldn't do second because if he does second, I never have to engage him. I can snipe one ship because it's an elimination game. The, the, the amount of points don't matter. You just need one more point than your opponent. Yep. And with PIC, I, I calculated it because I was talking with Tokra today about it. Um, I think you can snatch the token turn one with Squall and the Lambda activation. And then the range one of, of the strategic, you can snatch a token even if he deploys it at the, the 
border edge of the setup area, which is distant five uh, from his edge. You can stack a token turn one, and then from there it's just, I think, downhill. So he had to choose uh, first, and played my targeting beacons again. And yeah, he had, I think he made the right call going in with, with the Demolisher, trying to snipe my Centicore, which uh, limits my relay power because yeah, Centicore is still broken. They didn't change that. So my flotillas are on the other side of the board and I can still activate via magic. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's stupid. And yeah, then just Morallo happened, Stone Squads happened. He had no, no chance of really closing in with, with his Kuat versus my Quasar because I had so, so many deployments. I could delay, 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 and then place my, my two important ships where, where I need them to be. Um, and I think in, in the end I tabled him. But it's an elimination game. It doesn't matter if you, if you lose by one point or, or 400. Yeah. I think it was a rough matchup for him. Going first was the right call, I think. And he tried it his best, but I think it was from the beginning he was at a disadvantage in this matchup. And then uh, Angry Ewok won against uh, Trufiness. It was I didn't watch the game because it was like 1 a.m. German time, which is way too late. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was a rematch then, and man, it w was a tense game. It was one of the best games I've ever played. He. he did the right call. I, he had a lot of practice, which I, I, res I respect because I think he had five practice matches against this yeah. list in the week before. And I'm like, man, how can you play five matches in a row? Oh, I don't think uh, you can play as him. Morello as five matches in a row without <laughs> losing your mind, let alone against him. Uh, I played seven games in two days. That's uh, <laughs> not, not, your, not your, your stomach is a lot tougher than mine. Uh, for. Uh, yeah, uh, but no. Uh, by the way, uh, Doctor has a video down below. I'll link it either here or in the description of that final if you want to watch it. But anyway, you were you were setting the scene. Yeah, it was the rematch, the crutch match, and he did the, the, the right call, I think, he took first. Um, he had the right game plan, like keep his uh, ships and squadrons um, bunched up, so if I engage, it's under his flag bubble. His plan was to uh, lead with the Salt Frigate, because I cannot nuke it down in one round with just uh, my squadrons. Um, he has, a, a, I think, a longer part where he explains his theory behind uh, deploying and everything on, on Doctor's video, which is great. Uh, listen to it. A lot, a lot of insight on like how to engage these squadron-heavy lists if, you're, if, if they have a stronger squadron wing than you. It was it was a very close game. I think I won by like fifty moth, but it could have swung any direction. Any direction. Fifty moth isn't that much. It's it's one TSD ninety. It's two squads of mine. He he did the right thing. He tried to to tie up my squadrons with his squadrons, target down my key squadrons. He couldn't quite get to my key squadrons. Uh, he had to focus on the Phantom and on Saber, which are easy points because they have no no uh, defensive tokens. He had to focus, focus on Merrick, and he has 6 HP, 2 braces. Yep. It takes a lot of damage. And he only has like 3, three blue die attacking uh, squadrons with his A-Wings and Hera. So, but man, it was, it was a wild ride of emotions. I think when he turned in his, his CR-90, I was like, yeah, now I got a chance. I can score the TSC-90. I can score some of his squadrons because he has to engage, or I can pull the squadrons back and then get on his next ship. Then he somehow got back, he slipped my net, and then I whiffed some rolls. His, his CR-90 was close to escaping, and then King Kapu, the hero phantom, rolled in, and he whiffed, we whiffed two crits, and then Sloan, Sloan re-roll was, was a hit, so I got these points, and then I think, yeah, okay, now I got it. But it was a close game. Perfect battle plan from him, just, I think, one slight mistake. Uh, that he made, I made a, a, some slight mistakes with post placements, but it's, I think it was worth the final finale and a tense game throughout. 
when I was looking at it as well, there were you had like two parallel lines, and it felt like the quasar and the raider and the Arquitans were being run into the corner. And as soon as they stepped off that line, it would have been like gazelle stepping into a river, and the alligator that is Akbar was just waiting to eat you. And I was yeah. looking at that, and I was going. I, 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 for all, all the life of me, thought he was just going to take those ships off the table. There was nowhere they were going to be able to run. But, like, it, it was fantastic flying from the boaty. Um, you know, it was just so tense watching that. Um, yeah. I, knew, I knew from, from uh, turn one, I knew I was on a timer because I, when I saw where his uh, squadrons uh, or, or his ships were heading and his squadrons were positioned, I knew I only had like one opportunity to go there um take out like a ship then survive his squadron rogue approach and then his first activation get my squadrons in kill his squadrons and then just hope that squads that i killed because again I, i'm slow and I, I will win the squad fight um that it will suffice because I was thinking, I, I either lose Centicore or I lose uh, the Quasar, and both are around, I think, 77 points. Let me check, yeah, the Quasar is 77, and the, the Architens is uh, 66 points. So I knew I had to, to get one of his uh, CR-90s and one of the uh, his Squadron Ball, because I will lose either the Quasar or the Architens. I cannot save both. And I, I, I lose some squads. That's natural. He has four, four counter... Counter A wings. He has uh, Hera, who has a fantastic anti squadron die armament. So I knew there was some time. And then there's always the fact that you can some, sometimes lose a Gazanti. It can happen. Gazantis or transports, they, they get one shot. Particularly when there's Akbar dice around the place. Yeah. Especially if it's like six or seven Akbar dice with Kate Klein and Sholin. That's And yeah, so Hooch. Uh, Huge respect for him for playing. I know how he feels about the list. And so he, he did the right thing, I think. He played almost a perfect game. And in the end, it's just a dice game. Dice could have gone in both ways. So yeah, I was lucky to make it. I, I was happy to make it because, I, to be honest, I, I wouldn't have thought that I, that I make it this far and then making the titles even 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 better, it's a, it's a super great experience, and I'm, I'm grateful well, if that you I went at all those, the way. Those names, like that, you've gone through to get here, like you didn't just look into good matchups against, you know, baby seals. You've got Aracius, you've got Gilded Palaean, you've got Rocrax. Like, you know, you, you you hit nearly every every big meta on the way up. So fair play to you. You know, I mean, it is a fantastic win in a fantastic uh, competition. All credit to Biggs and, you know, his organization of it, you know, and to everyone who took part, you know, it was just a, a great fun. By the way, I love the fact you named a phantom after Ginkapo, the British player, <laughs> who is probably the biggest proponent of phantoms anywhere. Um, that, 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 that's a bit brilliant. So do you think you'd be taking a break from Morello type lists and playing something different or... Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, let's get real a bit. Uh, our goal was to show how stupid Morello is. We know it's effective. We know it's it's, it's a winning list for sure. It takes a, a, a list that has won worlds and has won uh, continentals, uh, Euros, yep. um, as well, and make it even stronger. And yeah, everyone knows Morello isn't healthy for the game, but it hasn't been proven on the table yet. Well, I because, think it has uh, now. Yeah, it has now, but before when, when we were theorizing it and we wanted to, to go to Worlds 2020 with uh, Moralis and, and show that it's it's uh, bad game design, if you, if you want to say it, or that it's that it need, something needs to be fixed. It either needs uh, to be fixed that Sloan doesn't interact that well with him, um, or because let's be honest, why should Lambdas work with Sloan? It makes no sense. Yeah, and that, that is what makes this list so strong. We have like a Morallo, a squadron that can push Morallo and then attack as well, which is as strong as a tight defender, almost as strong because yeah, crits yeah. don't count. But 
it's stupid. It's, you, you don't attack for, for the damage, you attack for the chance to get an accuracy with, with the lambdas and flip some tokens. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to show that it can be uh, played at a comp competitive level, and that it's not just a gimmick list, that Morado can be a vital asset, and that you don't need to, like, to bring a 30-point bit to be successful with it. Let's be honest, I had a one-point bit, yeah. and it had all, 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 the, all the, the, the factors that make Imperial squads great, a Sloan, MJ, Morallo, Morlock, Mythil, Squall, Senticore, everything condensed into one list. And wanted to show that it's maybe they missed an opportunity in 1.5, somehow fixing it. I, and I, I, I hope, think Sloan is will. the problem more than Morello in this case. Or do you I think, think it's, it... it's a combi the combination of everything. Like Sloan, in my opinion, Sloan should only work with Swarm. That will also make uh, Merrick Jenden a bit weaker. Um, I don't think just increasing the points will not fix this problem because it's her ability that makes her that great. And people still play a Recon at 44 points, uh, 34 points. And I think, uh, like now in the, in the team league, if you put Sloan to 32 in a competitive list, uh, you will still see Sloan. That's that's a problem. And I think if you if you put it down to uh, only make her work with Swarm, that would be a, the right step. You still win the squad war. Will you win the squad but, war against a bigs ball, though? Like, if you run into a dedicated bigs ball, you're, you're, that's the one thing where you might not be guaranteed to win it in, with Sloan as it is. How much weaker would it be against Rebel X-Wings if, if you're Swarm only? And if you remove Marek Jenden out of that combination, is Imperial squads then extremely pillow-fested against ships? Now, with the, with the ace cap gone and, and all the scatter aces gone, I don't think it would be a, a huge nerf because mm -hmm. generics, Imperial generics are... I, I mean, they are good at intercepting things, but you cannot approach a Star Destroyer with TIE Fighters or TIE Interceptors. They, they just pop under the flag. And what, what made Sloan good back in the days was the amount of Scatter Aces that you could put, uh, put into this. I think it was uh, five Scatter Aces, Merrick Jenton, and then Saber. And the Scatter Aces just don't die on the flag of one ship. And if you win the Squad War, you have a free reign of the of the space or air, whatever you want to call it, with your fighters, and you can start wrecking ships. Or you have MJ who can just single-handedly destroy smaller ships. And I think if you take out the ability of MJ to work with Sloan, that would be one thing. And yeah, there might be a, I think a big spall can break it, but I don't, I'm not sure. I think the Morello iteration of our list will win against a big spall if you get the, the um, token activations. Because it's constantly it's two to three yeah. damage that that get pumped in and it overwhelms uh, bigs it overwhelms uh, Jane's uh, Jan Ors uh, tokens so and you still have more lows like auto splash and a big spawn needs to be clustered together I think that's uh, the downside yep which I think Sloan would still win but maybe you do enough damage or or clue at them enough that the squads cannot rain freely afterwards and your other ships and rebels are way better at, at combining these uh, battle carriers, I think. Or it's easier to have a CR-90 uh, on the flank who, yep. can, uh, uh, who can harass a Quasar or anything. I think it can work. Uh, I found that a Recon, Recon Aces are or were a big problem in uh, 1.0 because um, you have one turn with with uh, Wedge, who's yep. then just invincible, and he can k kill Morello. Like you have a Dutch Wedge in one activation, they they can kill Morello. It's just a seven hull and, and one brace. That's like it's yep. similar to to um, Ghost Hera. She can die quite easily as well. So it's a tough call. And uh, and also as uh, for example, Poldy Schult and. Uh, 
I think every faction has has these type of fighters, uh, interceptors, like high speed interceptors with that can gang up on Morello. And let's let's be honest, three to four interceptors are enough yeah. to kill Morello. Easy as that, and it's not it's not invincible. This list it has a lot of moving parts. If you make one mistake in deployment, or if you overextend a bit, you can lose. If you overextend with a ship, you can lose. It has a lot of moving parts. You need a lot of concentration and a lot and a high as, a skill level. I don't want to praise myself uh, too much, but well, but I, I, I think I think once you're the Vassal World Cup champion, you, you can you can dispense with some of the humility. Yeah, but it, it, it was one way to get it. It was like I, I picked up this list and I won like every game. Yeah. My first games were either losses or or just six fives because I made so many mistakes with squadron placement and. It's the same with Dennis' list. You need to focus. You need. It takes a lot of uh, mental energy, especially in an over the board tournament. Uh, four or five games a day with this list, it's exhausting. Yep. And so, so you need to practice, practice, practice. And uh, I've worked, and I think it was one of your questions at the beginning, like half a year training with this list to get where I was yesterday yep. to play this list. Somewhat perfectly, and I think if I talk to Chopra and he saw this match now, he would find like five to ten mistakes that I made with this list. So, <laughs> how hard is it being in a meta with Tokra? Uh, to, like, he's a great guy. Don't get me wrong, but h- how, like, wait, 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 like, to get the to have what you think is a great game, and then for him to be able to point out in ten seconds a bunch of stuff that you did wrong. Which probably helps you grow, but it must be must be hard as well to kind of try and match yeah. that standard. It's so rough. I'm very grateful that the first tournament that I played, Tokra was the judge, and he he gave me some tips. And then now a year ago, he gave me his his list, and here we are. It's it's yeah. great. It's it's good to have these kind of players, and I think it's also what makes Amada great as a community because everyone is so helpful. Everyone just wants to help you get better. And like, if you lose and get tabled, no one's like, haha, you're stupid or you're, you're bad at this game. It's like, ah, you could have done this and you could yep. have done that. And that, that's what I love about this community. It's very inclusive. Um, if you do, you don't get like this. There's not much elitism in this game. Everyone is just trying to help you get better at this game. And everyone wants to have fun and, and fly casual, as, as Bix uh, wrote in one of his articles. And I think that's what makes this game, game so great. Even if you play at the highest level, it's still respectful. It's still, I think, a great sportsmanship between the players. Like, if someone makes a mistake or, or misses a timing, I haven't had a, a, like, a single game where, where someone went, no, no, missed timing, I'm sorry. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's very little great. rules learning. There's, there's occasionally people have to go to the Discord to find out because everyone's a bit confused because. They wrote cards yeah, but, like Rapid Launch Base, but like generally, once it's figured out, everyone's happy and we move on, you know? And yeah. that's a great way to play. Um, and this is the thing. If you do get 10-1, ask your opponent, how did that happen? Did you get the number of the bus that ran me over? And could you mm-hmm. give me directions to his house so it doesn't happen again? And more yeah. than likely, they they'll give you that advice in a nice, friendly way, you know? There's generally very few people um, that are kind of sending, like, I've played a bunch of games against Mandalorian Moose. I never beat him, except, I think, in one Rebellion in the Rim campaign where he was tired after work or something. But again, it's, it's it, it, like the advice that I got back and the, the help those games are for just getting better as a player. And by the way, I'm no near, near, near a good player um or in in turn but like yeah it's all about and even with angry ewok we like this is the thing that match was so close because he went away and even though like we we all know his opinion on the list and all that but even at that he went away and he practiced and practiced and practiced and it was so close because of that and that's really what made it a tense final you know um so that's the kind of you prepped for six months Dennis, like, again, practice things religiously. Aresius, always with the Mon Karens. The Canadians, you know, just practice, practice against each other. That's, that's, that's how you get, that's how you get good. Yeah. And that's how you get great. 
listen, I better let you go because it is now five minutes to midnight <laughs> in Germany. Thank you oh. so much for the giving us the time. And once again, congratulations, Mr. Vassal World Cup champion. Thanks for having me. It still feels weird to, to hear that or someone call, call me like that, but yeah, it's a great experience. Thanks for having me. Thanks for all the content that you put out. Thanks to the community for being such great, great guys. And thanks to everyone I've played or will play in the future. I hope we get Worlds next year so I can meet some of the American guys in person because Vessel is great, but I want to drink beers with you. And I'm sure they do as well. All right. Good night, everyone. Hope they keep you safe and talk to you soon.